to part five of this Selenium Web Driver with JavaScript video series on the Lambda Test YouTube channel. My name is Ryan, and during this session, we're going to be exploring parallelization. First up, we're going to take a look at what we actually mean by parallelization, how that differs to how we've run our tests previously, and what the benefits of running our tests in parallel are. Once we've done that, we're going to add another test to our existing Selenium test suite. Of course, you can't run a single test in parallel, so we'll need to add at least one more. Once we've added our test, we'll then look at how we can use Mocha to run our tests in parallel. And of course, at the end, we will do a full recap of everything we've looked at during this session. So let's get started. First up, let's take a couple of minutes to understand what we really mean by test parallelization. So essentially, test parallelization is a way for us to run multiple tests at the same time. Now, really, there are two different ways we can run our tests either serially or in parallel. When we run our tests serially, what we're doing is running each test in sequence one by one. That means that we're never running more than one test at the same time. The next test will wait for the previous one to finish before it begins executing. When we run our tests in parallel, it allows us to run multiple tests at the same time. So instead of just running a single test, we can actually run two, three, four tests at the same time. And the reason we do this is firstly to increase the execution speed of our test suite. As you can imagine, if we're executing more tests at the same time, the overall time it takes to execute a full test suite will be reduced. And as a result, this reduces the feedback loop. Testing is all about gathering information and feedback on our application. So if we can reduce the time it takes to gather all that information, it allows us to act upon that information earlier on in the process and hopefully fix those issues sooner. But test parallelization also comes with some complications. It's good practice to ensure that each of your tests is completely independent of all other tests in your test suite. It should not rely on the results of any other test or data created by any other test for it to run. You should be able to run each of your tests on its own without having to run a different test first. This means that when we run our tests in parallel, we know we don't have any data conflicts and we know each test will be able to run regardless of which order it runs in. Secondly, we need to be conscious of the system that we're using to execute our tests. If we overload our system by running too many tests at the same time, it can actually have the adverse effect. We can start increasing the time it takes to execute our whole test suite. And we may see tests failing if we start overloading the system. So just be conscious that you're not running too many tests at the same time. And you can change the configuration and work out what the best config is for you to use to get the maximum speed out of your test suite. So now let's go and have a look at our test. So up until now, we've just been using a single test in our Selenium test suite. But of course, you can't run a single test in parallel, so we're going to need to add another. If I go over to our test suite, we have our single test here in this first test.js file. Now, I mentioned previously that we can add extra tests within this file inside of our describe block. So we could add another it block 
to the end of this one with an additional test. But that is not how mocker parallelization works. It won't run its blocks in parallel with each other. So if you have lots of tests inside this describe block, they still will run sequentially one after the other after the other. Instead, Mocha runs these test specs or files in parallel. So if we were to create a new file with an additional testing, then we'll be able to see how Mocha will run those tests in parallel with each other. So we can do that now. So if I just copy what we already have, paste it here, and then rename it. Let's just call this second test. So we now have two tests. And at the moment, they're doing exactly the same thing. But that's OK for this demo, because it will just show how the tests run in parallel. We can look at adding subsequent tests which do different things later on. So the only thing I am going to change in this second test.js is I'm just going to change the describe block description and the it block description just so we can differentiate between the two. So first up, let's change this to add another to do tests and successfully add another to do. OK, so our tests are going to do exactly the same thing, but we should be able to see which one's running based on the description for the describe and the it block. So let's run that now via the terminal exactly how we've run them previously. So we don't need to change anything and Mocha will recognize that there's now two files in our test directory and it should be able to pick up them both and run both tests. There we go, there's one done. And you can see the Firefox is relaunched and it's now running the second test. If I go back to Visual Studio Code, you can see that it's ran add to do tests and add another to do test. So these are our two described blocks and inside each one has an it block, which is run and we have two passing tests, which is great. So now that we've run our tests serially, we can look at how we use Mocha to run those tests in parallel. And it's really simple to do. So if I jump back to the code, We've got our two tests that we've just run and both of them passed. And we saw how one instance of Firefox was launched and closed. And then once that closed, a, another one was launched and our second test ran and then that closed. Now, in order to run both of these tests at the same time, we need to just update the command that we use to execute those tests. And if you can remember, that command is stored in our package.json file. And it's this script here. So at the moment, every time we run npm test, we're actually running mocha with this no timeouts flag. So for running tests in parallel, we need to add a new flag. We can just add it to the end here, so just add a space hyphen, hyphen, and then quite simply, the flag is parallel. So using this flag will then tell Mocha to run our tests in parallel instead. So I can save this and we can go back to our terminal and we can now use exactly the same NPS test, NPM test command that we used previously. But this time, instead of running mocker no timeouts, it will run mocker no timeouts with the parallel flag as well.
And again, Mock will know to pick up both test specs, both test files. At the, but this time you can see that it's actually launched two instances of Firefox at the same time. So both my tests are running at the same time. If I go, and they're both closed. If I go back to Visual Studio, I can see just like before, we have both tests which have been run and two passing tests. The only difference this time is that we launched both of those tests at the same time and run them in parallel. So it's as simple as that, just adding a single flag to the end of our command in order to run them in parallel. So let's take a quick look at what we've done. So first up, we had to create a new file within our test directory. And this new file had a brand new test inside it. For this demo, it's exactly the same as our first test, but good enough to show parallelization. Once we'd added our second test, we updated our run command in our package.json file to include this mocker parallel flag and this tells mocker to run our tests in parallel once we've done that we could see that our tests ran exactly the same as when they ran sequentially but this time they ran in parallel both running at the same time so that brings this short video on parallelization to a close if you have any questions or want to get in touch, then you can find me on Twitter using the handle at Ryan Tester, or you can contact Lambda Test directly. If you're interested to learn more, why not check out the Lambda Test blog, where you'll find a whole host of blogs about the various testing topics. You can also check out the Lambda Test YouTube channel for other videos that you might be interested in. And lastly, remember that you can check out the certification section of the Lambda Test website to see how you can become Lambda Test Selenium certified. So that's it for this lesson. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.